We are going to do our video today in your notebook. The date today, write it in, 12 blah, whatever it is. And it's going to be on what's known as indirect measurement. Okay, again, if I'm going too fast in the video, uh, you can't just say, slow down, Miss Everly, because I can't hear you. But uh, I'm trying to do this before the bell rings for the next period. So I'm going to get this done. So you need to pause the video if I'm going too fast, okay? Indirect measurement. What the heck is it? Well, it would be to measure certain things like trees, okay? Trees, uh, flagpoles, lampposts, buildings, houses, skyscrapers, uh, in a way where you don't actually have to climb the tree or climb the flagpole, um, which I know you want to do. But uh, it's something to where you would not have to do that. So let's label this first example, trees, okay? Here's one where we would use what's called indirect measurement. We're not going to climb the tree, okay? So let's say we have a student and they're five feet tall. You might be like, hey, that's me. And on that particular day, at that particular moment, they cast a shadow 15 feet long. And what's nice about this particular problem is it draws the picture for you. So let's see, there's my five foot person and there's their shadow 15 feet long. A nearby tree, the same moment, casts a shadow, here's a tree, casting a shadow 75 feet long. Whoa. Find the height H of the tree. Well, we have two similar triangles happening right here. We have the smaller one, 15 by the 5, and we have that bigger one of the tree. We have our tree, which we don't know the height of, and we know its shadow is 75 feet. So we can set up a proportion for these similar figures. Their sides, corresponding sides, should be in proportion. So I could say 15 relates to 75, just as, just as what, this 5 relates to the unknown, the height of the tree. I can actually solve this one without cross products. I could just say, I could relate the 15 and the 5. 15 divided by 3 is 5. So 75 divided by 3 will give me the height of the tree. And do you know that off the top of your head? Because I don't. No, you do. You're better than me. 25 I got perfectly. So the nearby tree, okay, that tree is 25 feet in height, and I didn't even have to climb it. I just used my math skills. And which math skills? Similar, similar figures. People, ha, huh, being used here. Okay, we're gonna do one more. Yep, that's right, one more. Something else that's considered indirect measurement would be um, like civil engineers or surveyors, that type of career, where they're measuring over here the distance across the river. But you know what? They don't want to cross it. They're going to use the math skills to figure out the distance across that river. Okay, and guess what? You can use similar figures. So they took the measurements shown in the figure at the right. Look at all these measurements they took. Okay, see it over there? See it? Where triangle JKL is, do you remember what that symbol is? Similar to triangle NML. I have triangle JKL, that one there, is similar to NML. Find D, the distance across the river. Okay, since they're similar triangles, their corresponding sides are in proportion. So let's say I start with D. D corresponds with what side in this triangle? Well, if you're unsure and you can't see it from the picture and you want to just be sure you got it right, look at the sides it's coming from, JK. So if I go back to my similarity statement, I have JK, the first two letters. So I go to my second statement and the first two letters is NM. So that's the side I want to go to over here, NM. So D corresponds with 525. And then I would need two numbers here. And are there two numbers in the picture? Yes. But where do I start? 
I would start with the smaller triangle here because I started there first. So I'm going to go 300 corresponds to 450. And then from there, I would go ahead and just solve it. And now I can figure out, using my similar triangles, the distance across the river without actually crossing it, using math skills. Now what do you think? Can you solve this one without using cross reference? Well, you can, always. Will it be easier? Well, here's my advice. I probably psh, cut those off, because that's really the same thing as dividing by 10. And then I'd probably reduce that to, uh, I could divide those both by 5, and I'm at 6 over 9, which actually reduces again. I could divide those both by 3, and I'm at 2 thirds. So I'm going to put D over 525 equals 2 thirds instead. Smaller numbers, nicer. And then I would go to the cross products if I didn't see a relationship between these two. And you know what? I do. Because I can tell 525 is divisible by 3 by doing the quick trick. 5 plus 2 plus 5 is 12, which is a multiple of 3. So I know it definitely goes into 3. So I'm going to actually divide it and get that number, because then I can figure out 3 times what is 525. Since I know it goes in perfectly, I won't be wasting my time. 3 goes into 5, blah, 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 6, 7, 1, oh, whoops, I'm left with, stop it, 5, oh, ho, ho, 3 times 175 is 525. If you don't believe it, actually multiply it. Okay, I didn't believe myself there for a minute, so I had to check it. So it works, meaning I'm going to take 2 and multiply it by that same number, 175. And the distance across the river is 350 what? Oh man, go back to my picture. Oh, it's not feet, it's meters. 350 meters. And that is known as indirect me measurement. Oh my gosh, I made it just in time. See you on Friday.